While surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a whirling pool of sand. And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time. chicken outfit. Hey, we're lucky these Philistines took our word we're strangers and not enemies. You saw what they did to that village last night. We gotta get out of here. This is worse than the Foreign Legion. Be patient. Margo doesn't have it easy either. Mm. I never knew horses could be so thirsty. Ugh, and cleaning up after them. Stop complaining. <laughs> Hannibal's army had elephants. What's all the noise? It's Goliath, the big one who joined us last night. He plans to wrestle six men at a time and beat them all. Six guys? This I gotta see. Ah, one guy going up against all those brutes? <laughs> Must be Godzilla. believe it. I think it's those other six guys who are crazy. I wonder what kind of cereal he has for breakfast. <laughs> Now's our chance. Our chance? You want to fight him too? Our chance to escape while they're watching the fight. Come on! You forgot something. What? The water buckets. Will a basket do? 
Now, if that fight will last just a little longer... Ah! It's finished. Then we are too. Maybe not. Did you ever hear of disappearing in a cloud of dust? Follow me. Weird, isn't it? We can't tell what century it is, or, or what year it is. Or where we are. My guess is we're someplace where people worship lions. <laughs> That's wild. What makes you think that? Because there's a big statue of a lion right over there. They've even colored it so it looks almost... <laughs> That's no statue. That's the real merchandise. I hope he's not on a lunch break, too. I don't think he's seen us yet. He's after those lambs. What'll we do? Nothing. Oh, no. He's coming this way. Oh, what a way to go. Lunch for a lion. What's going on? You won't believe it, but there's a kid out there throwing rocks at the lion. Oh, how can we thank you? <laughs> It really wasn't such a heroic deed. That old lion is mostly all growl. I've chased him away before. Uh, you do this regularly? David! David, where are you? Over here. This is my brother Eliab, and as you heard, <laughs> my name is David. This is Margo, he's Smokey, and I'm Derek. Greetings, shalom. Forgive my abruptness, but a message just came. You must go immediately to Gibea, to the palace. King Saul sent for me? His council did. The king is in a dark mood of despair. Some even say God is angry with him. Anyway, they've heard of your singing and thought it might help soothe him. Oh, all right, I'll get my harp. You play the harp? It's my second weapon. If the sling doesn't keep the lions away, <laughs> my singing does. <laughs> <laughs> He's being modest. He plays very well and makes up his own songs. Hey, he throws stones and sings. What we have here is a genuine rock musician. Thanks for letting us ride along, David. I only hope I can help the king. These are difficult days for Israel with the Philistines approaching our borders. They're mean, all right. We saw them. But I must warn you of one thing. If you go with me to the palace, you could be in danger. Danger? King Saul is unstable in his mind. There are even those who fear for his sanity. So if for any reason I displease him, well... He will turn against you and anyone with you? Ding, ding, would you stop at the next corner, please? This is where I get off. If you're going, David, it's good enough for us. Oh, what a day! First it's the Philistines, then lions, and now a king who gets mad at you. Be sure you neither sing nor say anything that might remind him of Samuel's prophecy. I understand. A prophecy? Years back, the prophet Samuel had a vision which took him to David's house in Bethlehem, where Samuel proclaimed one day David would be king of Israel. I did not know what he meant. Go in now, but remember, the slightest thing could throw him into a deadly rage. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, 
for thou art with me. Whew. That was close. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I think the king's sleeping. Good, good. Bless David. Music may be just the medicine needed, but you never know, one day to the next. news. The Philistines have crossed into Judah. Through what route? They are in force between Sokor and Azekah. As I suspected. We shall meet them at the Valley of Eliab and drive them back. Summon all my captains. Mobilize your men. We march within the hour. May I go with you, sire? War is not for boys, David. I am going to send you home. You have done your service for your king, and I am grateful. But isn't there something... No. Go now and tell your father, Jesse of Bethlehem, that you have found favor in my eyes. How pleased I am that you have returned. All is well with the king? He sends you greetings, father. These are my friends, Margot, Derek, and Moki. Welcome, Shalom. Eliab told me of you. Our home is your home. And the king, he found favor in you? David's music was just the miracle the king needed. He's recovered completely. Good, good. He shall need his strength. You know, of course, about the Philistines. He said to tell you. Boys, come out. See what stray lamb has turned up again. These three donkeys are Abinadab, Shama, and, well, of course, you met Eliab before. Yes, we did. Nice to meet you all. Did David disgrace us at the palace? Every day, in every way. <laughs> <laughs> Your arrival is indeed well-timed. We shall have a feast tonight to end all feasts. Music, wine, all our friends. Father, you really don't have to... Rest easy, little one. It's not for you. Tomorrow, these three go to join the army of their king to fight the Philistines, to keep our people free. Our men stand ready? Yes, my king. If the Philistines gathered at Ezekiel, they must come by this valley. Sire, look at distant hilltop. Ah! It's not possible. He's a giant. Who can this be? It must be he called Goliath of Gath. I've heard stories of such a monster, but I never believed them to be true. Alas, they are true. I, too, have heard of this Goliath. Israelites, send out a man who dares fight me. If he kills me, all Philistines will be your servants. <laughs> but if I kill him, then you will be our slaves. We have no man to match him. None. But his challenge must be met. There is no need for battle or senseless killings of many. Let one man come out to me. One of us must fight him. But none of us has a chance to win, only to lose, and thus bear the burden of having forfeited our people into slavery. Come, come. I grow lonely out here. Surely, amongst the men of Saul, there is one man with spine. Step forth. Take counsel. I shall return tomorrow and every day thereafter until you send forth a warrior to meet me.
Captains, find a man in our ranks who can not only meet this Goliath, but vanquish him as well. We must find such a man. The fate of our people depends upon it. We brought the sheep down from the high meadow, Father. They sure can run. <laughs> I don't know how the lions have a chance. Any news from your sons? Not a word all month. Well, you know what they say. No news is... Oh, I'm sure they are in fine health. No, I'm, I'm not sure at all. Well, perhaps I could go find them. Yes, I'm sure they would be glad to see you. I've put some food for them in the wagon. Cheese, corn, bread. Could we all go? I would like that. Very well. But be careful, David, and remember the prophecy. Yes, Father. We should be there soon. Do you think Saul's army can handle the Philistines? It won't be easy. There are strong people, and their weapons are better than ours. It sounds kind of one-sided. It isn't. If they invade, we will be fighting for our homeland, and the Lord will be with us. I see some tents. It seems peaceful. That's a good sign. Where might I find the sons of Jesse of Bethlehem? <gasps> there they are. Eliab, Abinadab. Well, the stray lamb returns again. You're all well? No wounds? No, none. We're quite well. Father was worried. We all were. We received no news at all. How goes the battle? Yeah, did you do a little rock'em suck'em? Look, cheese and bread and corn. That's your welcome. Have the Philistines showed up yet? David, we appreciate your coming, but this isn't really the place for you. So we'll just unload the food, then you can go back and tell Father all is well. Something's wrong. What is it? Sheep of Israel, will today be the day? Choose a man. I defy you. There must be one man of courage in the army of Judah. What about you? <laughs> or you? Or you? <laughs> is he gone? And if he isn't, I am. Why does no one fight him? Who is this Philistine who defies you? Goliath of Gath. He has made this challenge every day. For how long? The past 40 days. 40 days? And no Israelite has answered him? Even though King Saul has pledged that whoever of us goes out and saves us from shame will receive great riches and high rank. And the king's own daughter will be given to him as his wife. Any guy who goes against that gorilla will get the king's daughter as his widow. I don't understand why you are all so fearful. What do you mean you don't understand? Did you note his size? And his armor? No one can beat him. All we can do is wait and pray for a miracle. He is but a man, and no true soldier of Israel should stand in fear of him. You have no right to talk so big. You know nothing of fighting, only of tending sheep. Why did you come here anyway? Our father asked. You wanted to peek out from behind a tree and see a battle. But I see no battle. Only one lone enemy who dishonors us. If no one else will fight the Philistine, I will. You? Yes, and gladly. But not for riches, but because he stands for evil and he would enslave us. You wish to fight the Philistine? Yes, my king. I brought food for my brothers, and I heard the challenge. David, your spirit pleases me. But Goliath is a soldier much learned of war and weapons and a giant in strength. You are but a youth, a poet, a shepherd. And as a shepherd, I have fought against lions and bears, huge beasts who came to take our lambs, and I have slain them. To this Philistine, I will do the same as he threatens to take the land from our people. He's in with the king now. Our little David, how can he be so foolish? He should never have come here. David has a mind of his own. Don't worry. You're getting upset over nothing. The king will never allow such a mismatch. Never. Oh, uh, very well. And may the Lord go with you. David, here, my best armor for you to wear. The armor will protect you. There is not time, my king. These are strange to me. But you need their protection. With respect, sire, I need no protection. 
I go not to defend myself, but to attack. But you must have a weapon. I need only my staff and sling. When the Philistine comes tomorrow, I'll be ready. He fights the giant with just a stick and a sling? Oh, he will not survive. He did against the lions and bears. But, sire, in good conscience, how can you send one so young? There is something about David, a purity of soul that somehow reassures me. Perhaps such faith and courage is the only way we can ever match the might of Goliath. happen I will go in his place too late David is there what is this you come to fight Goliath ah! is a boy the best the tribes of Israel can send I am a soldier of the Lord a soldier I see no weapons a stick am I a dog that you come at me with a stick and I shall defeat you even without it for your insolence, I will carve your flesh and feed it to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. <gasps> it is you, Goliath of Gath, whose flesh will be fed to the beasts this day. So all the earth will know there is a God in Israel. This will put you and your God to rest. And then all of Judah will be taken over by these, your Philistine masters. Not upon this day, for the battle is the Lord's. I come armed with the name of the Lord of hosts, which is the mightiest weapon of all. Enough! Let us see how mighty it is. David had success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. And when King Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in awe of him. Margo, Moki, come on. We have a long way to go.